Black sea bass are common in the waters off the eastern United States and along the Gulf Coast. They're popular as a mild white-fleshed fish with fishermen and cooks. It's a white meat, it's a flaky uh, texture, uh, excellent quality. Uh, most of the time, you know, we get the fish within a couple of days. Sometime around here, we get them that same day, so we're able to get a real fresh fish. But in gourmet restaurants in the U.S. and Asia, there is a growing demand for healthy, live black sea bass that cannot be easily met through the usual suppliers. That's what prompted scientists at Clark Atlanta University and Skidaway Institute of Oceanography to try growing black sea bass in a closed aquaculture system, an experimental fish farm. Our objective is to raise the fish for the sushi market, which would suggest because you're talking about a raw fish that the water quality would need to be very high. The fish are spawned at a fish hatchery. When they are a few days old, they are sent to the Skidaway Island facility where they grow in a saltwater tank inside a greenhouse. Initially, the microscopic fish larvae are fed on even smaller shrimp, rotifers, and tilapia fry. As the black sea bass grow larger, they are fed on juvenile tilapia with no antibiotics or other chemicals added. The tilapia, which are herbivores, eat the uh, planktonic algae, which is very high in uh, omega-3 fatty acids. The uh, tilapia spawn really well in shallow, warm water and very little food, and um, seem to really do well with uh, very little maintenance. The tilapia are bred in a separate pond and harvested on a regular basis. It's a very low cost operation that could easily be reproduced in a commercial setting. As the black sea bass increase in size, they're transferred to larger tanks where they remain until they reach at least two pounds. The water in the tank is purified with the help of a natural community of microscopic organisms that creates a biological filter system in the form of a microbial mat. This mat in itself is called a microbial community. We just give it the ideal conditions to grow. The organisms form a colony on a bed of cut grass. The mats are placed in biofilter trays that are an integral part of the closed system. One of the uh, major goals of this project is to develop a natural system of taking out wastes, of remediating the fish wastes, using basically algae and bacteria to do this, and releasing only good quality water to the natural systems recycling the water back into the aquaculture system. Here's how it works. The water from the fish tank flows into the biofilter tray and under a horizontal layer of microbial mats. The organisms in the mats keep the water clean, produce oxygen, and break down the organic byproducts of fish growth, which are converted into mat protein. The water takes a side trip through a column of fluidized sand where nitrifying bacteria remove ammonia. Then the clean water flows back into the fish tank. The scientists say since this system requires a minimum of electrical energy, it holds great potential as a cost-effective method for large-scale aquaculture of black sea bass. We think that the product would be of such superior quality that it would command a very high price in the market. Whatever your costs are, they can be supported in a commercial venture can make a profit. And it's appealing to sushi chefs and upscale restaurants because the fish are grown in what could be called an organic process with little or no buildup of solid wastes. The fish now is very good and the taste is different now. Student interns from Clark Atlanta University spend several weeks of their summer working on the Black Sea Bass Project at Skidaway Institute, 
funded by a grant from the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. The scientific exchange between the students and the staff benefits both. What I have loved is the changes that the students have brought in their creativity. They're just wild, wildly enthusiastic, and their, their creativity is absolutely wonderful. There's an immense amount of teaching that can come out of this. It's a great environment to be doing it in, too, because you can get laboratory work, and you can get field work in a very controlled situation. The bigger picture, I think, has to do with protecting the environment and using natural means to do so, and I think that's interesting. Ultimately, the success of the project will be determined by a taste test. The scientists brought live sea bass to the chef at Sushi Time restaurant in nearby Savannah, Georgia, to prepare. Fillets of popular favorites like tuna and salmon provide a lot of meat for sushi. There's less meat on a black sea bass fillet, and it's a little chewier than some sushi lovers expect. So the chef makes the slices very thin. Later that day, Savannah residents are treated to a new taste sensation. He's arranged a beautiful display of this black sea bass mixed in with tuna and some other kinds of sushi. It's good. It's right up there. It's a comparison. Oh, okay. It has a little bit less of an intense flavor, but um, it has a nice texture. Very, very delicious. Yeah, yeah, very nice. It is very good. It's got a good texture, good taste. And that's not a <clears throat> too much wasabi. <coughs> the Skidaway team of scientists believe in the near future their closed aquaculture system can be adapted to support a commercial venture that would produce thousands of black sea bass in a clean, controlled environment. The next step is high density stocking. We're going to try and stock as many fish as we can into a 1,500 gallon tank and see how well they do in the system. I think it's unique, it's sterile, it's clean, it's environmentally friendly, it's healthy. I think it's got a lot of potential. Thank you.